Today on Gamers Couch, Machi Koro, the expansions Millionaire's Row and the Harbor Expansion, or the Großstadt Erweiterung, or no, there's no other one. <laughs> Hi everybody! Hello. Welcome to the Gamers Couch table. <laughs> That's a word, right? My name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten, owner of this channel, and this sweet human being next to me in the awesome red shirt is my dearest husband Daniel who's board gaming with me and talking about board games with me every Sunday on this couch. Today we're having an expansion for the Machikoro game. The uh, video for the base game will be in the iCards up above and you can check out that video if you want to know a bit more about the general rules of I'd say all the Machikoro I, games. I This game is so quick I can give you a quick refresher. Yeah, but we're not gonna dive into the, the yep. rules uh, too much. Uh, we're gonna go about the video just like every week. Rules and gameplay, likes and dislikes and funny stories and experiences and a tiny bit of a teaser for Drawfer Initiative at the end. So my dear, I'm gonna sip coffee and you're gonna talk. Rules and gameplay. So this box that came out in Germany, which uh, as I said is oh, it's the other box, uh, which is called uh, Die Großstadt Erweiterung. Um, is essentially just a, a double pack of two different expansions that came out in the US and Japan. Uh, I think, what, what did we see? It's uh, one is called in Japan the Sharp expansion. Mm, the Harbor and the, and the Harbor. Sharp. Mm -hmm. And uh, Millionaire's Row in, um, in the US. Um, both expansions uh, have one thing in common, um, and that is that the setup of the cards, the uh, the cards that you can buy in the game, are a little bit different now. So uh, instead of with the base game, where technically there was a variant in there that is similar to that, where you just reveal 10 cards, and if a card uh, comes up multiple times, uh, let's say, oh, there's another wheat field, you just put it on top of here. Uh, and you keep revealing until you have 10 different cards set out there. Um, uh, in, in this, you always set this up and uh, even a little bit differently where you always will have five cards that range from one to six and five cards that range from uh, seven to 12 or actually seven to whatever. You'll see that in the Harbor expansion. Um, and the... Uh, purple cards, there will always be two different purple cards revealed and they have their own stack. So there's always plenty of choice now um, with both of these expansions. And uh, I think we said that in the base Machikoro game, we already liked this variant. Uh, this is uh, even an even more awesome way to, to do that. Um, the game itself is still the same, meaning you start out with your little wheat field and bakery. You have your f four, um, well, deluxe buildings that you try to, to build. Actually, I'm, I need to put them the other way around because I haven't built them yet. Otherwise, I would have won instantly. Um, still the same goal. You want to build all of these uh, and you start out with uh, these two cards uh, and um, the same game you roll dice or a die at the uh, at the beginning and whenever you roll the number that's on one of your cards you get the benefit of it. If it's a blue card you also get the benefit if some other player rolls that. So if someone else rolls a one I also get the one coin I would have gotten if I rolled a one. Green cards are only for personal use. And then there's the nasty red cards that uh, make other people give you money uh, because they, they're they all restaurant oriented or all food oriented. Maybe there's a secret me message behind that. Um, but usually it's to steal money from other players. Whereas the purple cards are a mix of all of them, generally quite powerful, but also tend to be expensive or have some caveat attached to them. So let's dive right in. The Harbor expansion, we're going to start with that, actually introduces a couple more deluxe buildings. Uh, it has um, uh, the, what is it called, the mayor's uh, house? City Hall. City Hall, yes. I'm terribly, terrible at English right now. Uh, the City Hall, the Harbor, 
you can use the other camera screen. Um, I'd like show. I'd like to oh, okay. The city hall. <laughs> the harbor. <laughs> And the airport. Uh, you may notice that uh, the city hall actually has no cost attached to it and has no gray side. That is because you will start out with this card, which uh, now incredibly makes your turn more useful than it used to be before. Because this card reads, if you don't have any coins at the beginning of your building phase, you get one coin from the bank. So... Uh, we might have ranted a little bit about that in the base game, that sometimes you have turns where just nothing happens. City Hall actually kind of counters that and uh, at least gives you one coin. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can always buy something for that one coin, um, but it gives you way more money uh, through this than you would usually have, and it's at least not as luck-based. Uh, the harbor, however, costs two coins and uh, allows you to count two um, points more if you roll a 10 or higher. Now, why would you need to do that or why would you want to do that? Well, uh, there are some new cards um, that introduce numbers that are higher than 12 uh, that uh, or 12 and higher. So the harbor would try to or uh, makes it a little bit easier to get to those cards. And then we have the airport that says uh, if you don't uh, build anything uh, in your turn, you get 10 coins from the bank, which is also pretty... It's like the the city hall, but in big investments. So this is the big guy's city hall. No, it doesn't work. It's, the airport is its own thing, but it gives you money even faster. As for the cards of the expansion, I think it's safe to say it... Most of these cards are in the same spirit as the base game. There's one little thing or mechanic that is introduced here, and uh, those are those um, uh, boat-related cards. Um, actually, I still it's still the, the new setup. Let me get used to it. Uh, so we have uh, two different boats, and they give you coins, but only if you have already built the harbor, so kind of forcing you into... Uh, building your uh, uh, bigger projects down here and making these accessible. However, uh, from the the effect side, they are quite similar to the base game. So, for example, this uh, uh, little boat um, gives you three coins, but you have to have the, the harbor. The uh, big sea fishing boat says... Uh, uh, if you if you roll with two dice uh, or you roll with two two dice and get as many coins as you have rolled, which is obviously powerful, but uh, seeing here that this is twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, uh, if without the um, without the harbor expansion, it would be almost impossible to get this card anyway. Regardless, if this says uh, you have to have the harbor to actually use this card. Um, but there are some other cards like uh, our uh, big grocery store, uh, the Walmart of Machikoro, um, that triggers on a 12 and 13 that gives you a coin for every of your little uh, restaurant uh, shops. So uh, these are also quite powerful. Um, then you have uh, two cards that are actually work together. You have uh, the flower field, which just gives you one coin, and you have the flower shop, which gives you one coin per flower field, which is a nice combo way to to get more coins. But again, you've, you, that's nothing really new here. Uh, as for our bad red cards, um, you have the sushi bar, the pizzeria, and the burger grill, and it's steal a card from everybody and uh, the sushi bar again to the theme of the harbor expansion you have you need to have the harbor built to actually use that uh, but if you do you get three coins um small tip from me the pizzeria is especially nasty because it's a seven and it is annoying as hell if you are playing only with the harbor expansion and kind of are tempted to use two dice all the time because you want to go for the higher rolling ones, just triggering the seven that often. Uh, surprisingly, although this is an expansion, it does not add a third die to the game. So uh, we are still stuck with two dice, which is fine. It's... And that is the Harbor expansion.
I would say more of the same. Uh, they pretty much have just one new mechanic in there, as in you have to have the harbor built to benefit from some of the card's effects, and they're all maritime themed, so kind of fits in there. Um, and some of your new building projects, um, specifically the uh, the city hall might be the one that has the most impact on the gameplay feel at least kind of mm. I, I don't want to go into rating yeah, thoughts already a, but uh, yeah he's skipping like one and a half sections <laughs> no not really i just want to <laughs> now let's talk about the other expansion and yes you can mix and match those two the manual also encourages you that if you've played with the game a couple of times you may leave out certain cards if you're really unhappy for example with the red cards and want to have a more peaceful less uh, annoying interaction or remove some of the purple cards there's enough in there to have a big variety of choice which by the way was a little um, point of uh, contention we had last time that there's not enough choice there's not enough stuff in in here Talking about stuff in here and things working together, forming combinations, combo uh, point values, the Millionaire's Row expansion is what you've been looking for. It also requires you to have the City Hall um, uh, set up, so you still get the one coin if nothing happens, but you're not working with the... well, you're working with the harbor, but not working with the airport, if I... Which one was the harbor? The harbor was the two coin we yeah we played. Yeah. So the the harbor is still present here, but uh, you don't necessarily need the airport. Or obviously now that you have kind of that many projects, you can play with the airport. But the airport costing thirty coins, this is pretty much a guarantee for a longer play. And if you, that's not something you've been looking for, you might want to leave that out. Um, in fact, the uh, playing the special ex expansion even without the airport with two players it still took quite long to play. So um, you might want to consider that during setting up your game. Now, uh, for the special uh, expansion, uh, again, there's uh, kind of it looks like more of the same, but there's a little bit more interesting things going on. First of all, there's a new condition introduced on some of the cards, which is called the vacation, meaning if you have a, a, one of your cards on vacation, you turn it by 90 degrees, not infringing any copyrights by Wizards of the Coast. And uh, to reuse that card, you have to roll the number and then turn it back again, but you don't immediately get the benefit. An example for that is the uh, uh, the vineyard. Uh, vineyard. Um, <clears throat> actually, I think the vineyard is this. So this is the winery shop, whatever. Um, so this says you get six you get six coins from from the bank for each of your vineyards which is a tremendously high amount of coins. But after that, this thing goes on vacation because everybody's drunk. Um, and you have to roll a nine again to unvacation this card. And uh, then um, you can use it again on a next turn whenever you roll a nine again. Um, Another thing that comes up here uh, as, a, as a new mechanic is that you might get rid of cards and give that to another player, or uh, you might get rid of built projects that you already have. So, for example, you have this construction firm here that says whenever you roll a four, you must turn one of your already built projects over to the other side, and you get eight coins for that, uh, which... Considering that the harbor only costs two coins is not too bad a deal getting eight coins. So essentially you would get six coins for, for that as long as you have that already built and can turn it over. Um, pro tip, you don't want to roll fours in a row quite often. Um, or um, let me find where, where it is. The other card. Um, yeah, the uh, logistics uh, uh firm says uh, if you roll a 9 or a 10 you must give one of your cards to another player of your choice you may not give them any of the purple or 
uh, uh, shops uh, and you get four coins for that. So if you have a bunch of very cheap cards and even some cards that come in here cost zero coins and even that has a price attached to it just quite differently, uh, you might get rid of cards and uh, hand them over to the other player if the coins are worth more to you. So why would you want to get rid of cards? Well, the Finance Institute uh, giving you a loan uh, of five coins. If you buy it, it sounds pretty neat, especially since it's free, it just costs zero coins. But whenever you roll a five or a six, you must pay two coins to the bank forever. So that is something you want to get away with. Uh, I mean, we live in Europe, we have a slight idea of how loans work and uh, how that is not really that great for countries and trying to maybe i shouldn't get on the political track with this one you want to get rid of the financial stuff <laughs> it's better for you you are more mentally sound um doing that and can annoy the hell out of another player doing so um but obviously there's also some some other shops which are um, just regular generating coins for uh, certain items so let's say you have this um uh drink manufacturer i'm trying to hold the cards straight this way that gives you uh, a coin for uh, every restaurant card of everybody <laughs> which is also pretty cool so Sometimes you you might be happy for other players to buy the red cards, although you probably kind of want to have most of them. Um, there's also a whole bunch of cards, um, well, not a whole bunch, but there are some cards in here that uh, refer, for example, like uh, this little uh, aunt, whatever, of, uh, what are they called, the, the little food shops? Uh, the shop aunt. around the corner. Of course, yeah, some, something like that. Uh, which like a little grocery again cost store. cost nothing because they're kind of cheap and around here they're called you might call them Trinkhalle. Um, or Tante Emma Laden. Or Tante Emma. Yeah, well, it's, maybe it's Aunt Emmy. Maybe there's some. <laughs> Tell us. Let us know in the comments. Educate us. <laughs> True. So this is free, but you only get two coins for for each roll as long as you have not built more than one of your uh, big projects and remember the city hall already comes built so if effectively this card would mean you only get two coins as long as you have built no none of the other uh, um, projects here um, which is at some times really taxing because you're like okay i have enough money to build that should i build it now but then all my little kiosk shops are not giving me money anymore because capitalism is kind of moving them out of the city. Um, hmm? Oh, I'm just remembering and, things that happened last night when playing this game. Just uh, got to remember for... And, the and, then, and then you have a pile of money, but you kind of look over to what the other player has and you see a bunch of red cards and you're like, I, maybe I want to buy some of the things here and not lose my money. So... <laughs> That's uh, yeah. There's some more uh, more interesting stuff going on here. Uh, as for the the purple shops, some of them are really nasty, like the IT shop. Which, uh, if you are a, um, a venture capitalist, this is the card for you. How does it work? Well, at the end of every turn, if you have a coin left, you can put it on here, and whenever you roll a ten, uh, a player of your choice. Sorry, every other player. We've played this with two, so kind of it's the other player. But every other player has to give you as much money as is on this card. It kind of sounds like Google the card, sort of. Uh, also, we have uh, this uh, big cleaning shop, which pretty much says you choose in a shop of your choice and every player uh, who has have these cards... Uh, blah. English. <laughs> English as a as a kind of presence, not language. If you roll an eight, <laughs> you choose a card, and every other player who also or or also owns this card. <laughs> Sorry. Who also owns this card must put it onto vacation. Not tapping, just vacation. Um 
you also you also get uh, a comment for doing that. But this is a kind of aggressive, annoying. Uh, no, these that you have this gigantic stockpile of, uh, let's say, if you're playing with uh, the Hub expansion, you have this uh, gi gigantic uh, stockpile of, of flower fields and, uh, sorry, and want to have the flower shop, um, uh, then you kind of either turn all the flower fields over or the, even worse, the flower shop over. So you are really annoying doing that. Don't do it. Not playing against me, please. Or here we have the park, another card that goes up to 13. So uh, that is another way where you want to have the, the harbor in place to actually be able to reach 13 or to have it to be to have things be more likely to go up to 13, um, which uh, could also be a music video. Who knows? Um, and uh, since this is the socialist card, it says uh, you get to distribute all coins of all players uh, equally across all players. So um, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's more, uh, well, we are all now happy with two coins. And you who had eight. Has... You greedy bastard. Yeah. I'm going to take away so, from you and redistribute. So probably the park and the, the park and Google is, <laughs> sorry, the park and the I don't IT wanna, company. Don't disc I don't want to discriminate against specific IT shops. So uh, the park and Apple are um cisco sorry nah, nah just throwing in names there no can you tell that we both worked slash work at it company Shh. <laughs> don't tell <laughs> otherwise they'll ask us questions about their wi-fi setup oh it? no i cannot install your printer <laughs> sorry <laughs> go on sweetheart <laughs> so um yeah, and, and but these are the the major new mechanics introduced, and uh, you might have guessed it by now. Uh, the harbor expansion kind of is more of the same, and actually I said that. But uh, this here is a little bit more meaty in terms of things working off each other. Specifically, the how many big projects have you already built? Uh, are, are some cards invalidated by that? Do you now want to get rid of the cards? You can now get rid of those cards. Maybe you can uh, return back to your previous state by turning over one of these bigger projects and uh, have just built one again to re-enable those if you for whatever reason want to although i can't really imagine why you would want to do that uh, but who knows there's uh it's all up to you there's interesting choices to be made in here um and as always the game ends if all of these are built and that's how this explanation ends with all of these Scattered across Built. the table. Okay. Thank you, honey. What was that high-pitched tone that irritated my ear? It's your voice. Uh, it's your wife's it's voice. It's your wife's voice. It's your voice's wife. Huh? huh? It's your <laughs> wife's voice. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Please. Only if I say you, take down the trash. Did you like something about this game? Let's hop did into... Did you dislike the, something about this game? Don't talk over me. Let's talk about... Did you <laughs> like some... Sorry. Did you like something? <laughs> this is what I have to deal with every day. I mean, it's hilarious. I, I, I will now drink coffee, so yes. please. But I can... Continue going to explain <laughs> stuff. It's I don't want to <laughs> interrupt you all the time, so... Great. Well, then start drinking. No, now I will now drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ready? Okay, go. This is, how, this is how it works at our household. Always hilarious. That's but, not an opinion. But I never get a thought across. It's really difficult. But now let's talk about likes and dislikes. Um, we played the Harbor expansion first and then uh, only afterwards um, played the Millionaire expansion. And I have to say, for a time, this game was shelved after the Harbor expansion because it was not doing what I hoped it would do. So 
uh, in the base game we said, oh, you have a few of the empty rounds, maybe uh, not that great, but if you're not having a lot of empty rounds, this game is pretty cool. We liked it. But uh, the harbor expansion didn't fix the empty rounds kind of a problem. Yes, you have the, the city hall, but we had a lot of empty rounds uh, where you couldn't do anything because you didn't have enough money or... Uh, no money at all and uh, that was kind of frustrating so I did I'm not really fond of the harbor expansion and the game was shoved for a while then we played the millionaires expansion and that was a really good game I really really like this expansion because it fixes this the things that I did not like the empty rounds kind of a thing. You might have them once in a while if you're really shitty with rolling dice, which can happen, but the odds are in your favor when it comes to you can do something meaningful every round. Even if you're not having any money or if uh, you, you rolled... Well, it's very likely that you can use the roll of your dice for something, getting money and then buying, especially with the, um, what's a magic card? No, that's not the one. With the, uh, I have to give you a card and then I can. This is the one. This one. You can turn something. So the four and the nine were the cards that I really liked because even with not having any money at all, if I rolled those numbers, I could sacrifice uh, something and I always uh, liked to sacrifice the things that I could get back easily or didn't need at all anymore. And uh, then have a full turn with kind of a lot of money, four coins or eight coins, you can really do something with it. So it did... Uh, work against the empty round kind of a issue that we had with uh, the base game and even more with the harbor expansion and it just got rid of that as much as it could and I really really liked that. Uh, I was very happy with this expansion here so I would uh, actually yeah well my personal taste I could get rid of the harbor expansion and just keep the millionaires one they're all in one box and we can switch things up if we like when replaying this game but I really liked this expansion and I even liked it more than uh, the base game so that was awesome uh, another awesome thing it's more of Machikoro, meaning more of the cute artwork that I really really liked and um, well Cute, cute shapes and colors. Um, even if it's not my turn and I'm not interested in what the other players might do, I could just uh, look at the cards and be, oh, this is so cute. <laughs> you know, nice to look at. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah. I I think we probably end up with the same opinion, but my Why? my my reasoning is is a little bit different. First oh, okay. first, first of all, um, I really like the new setup they they have here. But, oh yeah, uh, forgot that. I I like uh, I like the v kind of in the base game the variant where you have to put up different cards. That was a must for us anyway, just to randomize things a little bit. Um, and uh, this is an even more elegant solution to to that. So that is a big plus. First and foremost, for me. Now, uh, I, I agree with with you. The harbor expansion wasn't as thrilling as the uh, uh, millionaire's row expansion. Um, although I have to say the the harbor expansion is just more of the base game. At least that's how it felt mm -hmm. to me. Now, saying that that we kind of were from times to another times annoyed with the base game, not necessarily because it's. Um, it's boring or unfun, but it's uh, there's a fair amount of luck being involved rolling the right stuff to kind of pro progress. Um, also, the harbor expansion; those cards are not necessarily cheap. While the some of those new uh, millionaires row cards are comparatively cheap, they're just one coin, zero coin, even two coins. Um, whereas here you have. Uh, also two coins, but also five coins. There's some more expensive cards in, in here as well, but it, at least to me, it felt like 
I could always do something each turn. There mm. was rarely a turn, I think one or two turns, where I had the feeling that I couldn't do anything and had to save the coins for the next turn or, or something like that. Yeah, it was more like I had stolen coins from you the on yeah, my even, turn before and you were just but unlucky even, then but even, with rolling even, even then uh the yeah i have to say the city hall yeah. is one of the uh sabers that is almost i would say even if we would decide to play the base game now without any expansions that card must be in there to yes. make the base game this yes. setup and that card must be present in all of the machikoro games from now on yeah. and i think I agree. it should have been part of the base game i i guess that is an iteration that happened through feedback where well, i guess people like us weren't uh, too thrilled about uh, having the the luck of the roll however now, if I would be playing this, for example, with kids, and uh, the kids where um, I would have an advantage of over knowing the cards, being more strategically thinking, I think I would probably prefer to play the Harbor expansion with them if I want to mm. have to choose with these, just because they have a more equal chance of winning the game. Um, it is frustrating for the gamer who tries to plan out everything and sees everything. Oh, I could do this, and then I cascade this combo and blah. But sometimes you just want to have a, a game that is fun to play where you can do stuff. I think the the part that is it was or specifically was annoying with Machikoro and also is still annoying with this, uh, especially if you're playing with three or more or four players. It takes some time until it's your turn again. And then if you get to a turn where you have to do nothing, that is quite mm. frustrating in, in this part. Um, whereas yeah. this happened here too, but way less frequently yeah. um, to that. Um, that said, um, I think the the downside to the Harbor expansion, well, now it depends on what, what you want to see as downside or upside. This takes longer just because of our airport that uh, now takes 30 coins to build and just adds well to the overall game length now if you're not happy with that game as it was you might be set off by that so maybe you want to play this without the airport it's i mean the harbor feel a uh, harbor the harbor feel expansion to me feels like what a typical expansion would be you get more cards they're different. You get more coins, like more money is going going around the table. It, you stack up more and more stuff, and the game goes on a little bit longer, but it doesn't change the game in a lot of meaningful ways. Those three or four cards that requires the harbor to, to be built are not as that different. I Especially since the harbor is only two coins to, to build, it's kind of almost like a, a non-issue they if it says have had the harbor built or not, that doesn't matter. However, if it comes up in combination with the uh, Mirinus role, where you also have the stuff where you have to decide, do I want to build the harbor to use these cards, or do I want to not build a, a thing because I want to use my cards that uh, require me to have just one of my bigger projects built? That is way more interesting, and suddenly, kind of, this also makes this better to to me because now you have to decide and choose and. Uh, there were quite a lot of those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I very, very much like the Mary Nesro expansion just because there are different things in there. This uh, expansion now also, to me, made it viable to just keep rolling one die, which is like in, in the base game, you would escalate forward and go yeah. for the bigger buildings and more stuff, and then you would kind of go for the six, seven, eight uh, buildings uh, and go for two dice just to increase your chances of triggering those uh, to be less frustrated because that means you at least have some turns where you're not doing anything. Um, now with this, I, I, I this is kind of bleeding into gameplay experience, but it's it was pretty much viable staying with one die and just um, well going for maybe the high priced thing first. Um, until you then move over to the two dies, if at all, you could just stay with one die and be fine using using these because they are still good ways to get a lot of coins without having to go to the high, well, high value is the wrong kind of the high rolling cards 
would that require to roll two dice. Um, or you could stay with one die and still go for something like the the winyard. Uh, while, while you even don't have two dice, you still benefit from other players rolling two dice because that seven is quite powerful with three coins giving you from the bank. Um, same for the pizzeria from the harbor expansion. So you might even buy one of those cards even though you're not rolling two dice or might not even be able to roll two dice because you haven't built the train station yet. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if I sound excited, I'm, I really like this thing. And I'm pretty sure if we're playing with our gamer friends, this will hit the yeah. table. If uh, we play with a family that hasn't played this before, we might use this maybe sliced up with these because I think the base game is still, it's all right, but it's a little bit dull. I like that there's some more cards in, in here with uh, with that base game. But in any Leaving case, out the, the, si airport. the city hall will be there. Yeah, and... Uh, I think just from the timing feel for us, I think if we play with three or more players, we will leave out the, in the yeah, airport yes. uh, just to speed up the game a little bit. But yeah. that's, I think, the nice the nice thing about this kind of two expansion box because it's almost, it feels to me like a little toolbox of cards that allow you to uh, make Machikoro a game that kind of you are now able to alter to fit everyone's taste which uh, is also something that is pretty cool that is something i know from games like dominion which i very much like for dominion that if you're playing with people who really dislike the confrontation you leave out the cards that are confrontational and now you have a good choice doing that here as well um or if you really dislike having um, super analysis paralysis people on the table, maybe you get rid of the cards that are really combo heavy and make people agonize over, oh, should I take this or that? If you just keep it simple with the cards available, and uh, then uh, that should speed up the game as well. Um, so... Shall we rate? I think we... Are we going to rate both expansions together or separately? I think I want to rate the complete package. Okay. I, I, this is a little bit unfair for you English-speaking folks, but, um, I mean, Cosmos released this as a complete package over here, and to me, I want to rate that as a complete package. Okay. So, one, two, three. Uh, the harbor lost for me. I was not fond of the harbor I, at all. And we're going to hop into the funny stories and experiences right now, so we can talk about I, that. I was I was about going to say, say that as well, but then again, the harbor with this expansion is all, again, cool. So uh, to me, the harbor is just more of the base game, and um, that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but since uh, there's... Parts in this uh, box that make the game pretty much now very viable again for me to bring this out on uh, on some occasions with uh, family coming mm -hmm. over or friends coming over. Although it's still not a quick game to play, it is deceivingly uh, actually with that. It looks like, oh, these nice little cards and it's super simple and you just roll once per turn and then you're done. For some reason, it still takes quite some time to play this game. I mean, it says exactly. 45 and minutes. Do I see um, that right? Oh, it's on. Oh, is it? So it says, uh, yeah, it's ages eight and plus and uh, 45 minutes. So, yeah. Um, what really tipped the scale for me to not liking the Harbor expansion was actually our play. I, I still hear Harbor. I'm sorry for uh, that other part. <laughs> Harbor. Harbor. Harbor expansion <laughs> was our play with the three players. So we played it. And believe it or not, our round took us one and a half hours. All seasoned Machikoro players, we didn't have to learn a lot, just how the new cards work, then started playing. And I remember vividly how frustrated we all were because we mm. were having lots and lots of empty rounds and it took us one and a freaking half hours to complete one game and we were all well not really enjoying the time together in regards to i'm just 
rolling a die and I can't do anything and that goes round after round after round. We were so unlucky and with a game that is, yes, luck-based, but to that extent, I did not like it. Mixing in those cards into the uh, Millionaire Rose expansion and then playing it, cool, awesome, awesome, awesome. But having the Harbor expansion on its own, oh no, thank you very much. I can go with the base game and uh, have a dollar game, but then have it quicker. Because with the airport and so many more cuts, you just pretty much, or we just felt that we would... Um, well, extend the same experience of the of the base game, but also extend the empty rounds. Therefore, extend the uh, shoot and also kind of a feel. The and I did overall not like game this. because it just took longer to build everything. Yes, yes. Now coming to the um, the millionaire rose uh, expansion last night, it was freaking awesome. So. Javier and I played, and uh, we started out with very different approach, uh, approaches. You started with cards that uh, gave you coins or benefits if you would uh, not build your projects early on. And I went with um, the two things that I said. I'm having a for the uh, build construction company and the logistics firm, and I pretty much just did build uh, the four what was the four oh, the, the... number four this is what i built first the um the train station so i could choose to roll one or two dice that i could get the uh, logistics firm then and have all of my bakeries i was i was the bakery uh, franchise pretty much i had tons of those just uh, getting rid of them and pretty much um well, flooding his city and uh, me getting a lot of benefit out of them. And then once I got the coins, building the really, really uh, expensive uh, projects. And like I said, kind of sacrificing, not really, the smaller ones and being able to build them in one turn. And we didn't have a lot of problems or, or wasted time with the red cards. We both had them. But the nice thing is, with the Millionaire's expansion, I really like the three-star restaurant that you could only uh, take the coins if the other player had uh, built more than uh, two or more of these bigger projects. Only then this card would trigger. If you were, I, I could not trigger with it with you for mm -hmm. the longest time because you were keeping it to one project. Yeah. But that was uh, kind of speeding up the game again then and preventing those empty rounds a lot. We had three, I counted, three empty rounds. That's all I had in the whole game. And uh, you had about, I think, three or four as well. So there were rather few in comparison to a regular Machi Koro game or the Harbor expansion game. And it was a lot of fun to just play with um, the concept of, okay, which way am I going to go? Which path do I want to go down? Do I want to buy any card and uh, maybe not save money? Do I want to save money sometimes? Do I want to uh, flip one of those uh, bigger projects uh, to get enough coins to build the more expensive one? Or do I want to go uh, and build the projects like in four turns, which are the, my last four turns, which I felt you were going to. And that was really a lot of fun. I was, I was, uh, for the longest time until I, uh, I, I uh, realized, okay, this is what he's doing. I was like, why is he not building his project? Why is he just building the city hall and going across the table? He had to move into my playing space because he had so many cards. And I was like, why is he not? He has enough coins to build the train station mm -hmm. or uh, the amusement park or something. Why is why is he not doing that? I was for the longest time like, hmm, and this is where are you gonna let me win or no? He's not that kind of a person. <laughs> and it, it it came down to one round. 
Mm-hmm. And the last uh, one that I built was uh, the two one. It's the, the harbor. I built that in the because last turn. Because I sold it if, yeah, the before. Yeah, I, I had sold it before. And the next round, he would have been able to build. Did I skip? No, no. I did. Um, in the next turn, he would have been able to complete all of his projects, and he would have won. So it was well, one move. You still can can only build one thing yes. per turn, so that kind of screwed me over. But yeah, I, I, if I had. I could have won. I think I had to uh, roll in, in a ten or a higher mm-hmm. the turn before to to actually do that. Because that that's what I what I meant talking about this. So Sarah was shifting over specifically a lot of these wheat fields uh, and to, bakeries. To, to I was me. shifting to um, you. Uh, yeah, but the wheat fields were the important part because then I started buying the market halls so that gave me two coins per wheat field. So I had, I think, three market halls and uh, three or four wheat fields. So I, I kind of... And you got... Would have, three bakeries yeah, from I, me. I, I was I was like getting thirty coins or even more, it was almost forty coins for one of those triggers. Forty eight. But to I, I was be exact. I had to. Um, that's when I shifted back again. So one of the decisions I made early on was actually yes, I wanted to keep my projects low to benefit from these cheap cards and just get cards that either cost nothing or were really cheap to get more coins and then kind of start building from the other end down because I yeah. kind of remember from the base game, once you get to the point where you are generating the big box, it is way easier to keep on consistently generating them than crawling your way up, build one of these and then you kind of fall back a little mm-hmm. bit because until you get more money then it takes some time. So I want to have my engine running at full steam before, before I uh, invest in here. And again, both our, of our approaches were close. Valid it ways. actually came down to rolling the dice. And I'm perfectly fine with a little bit of luck in there, although I keep on ranting sometimes. About it. But um, He was very sad when he lost last yeah. night. Yeah. I made the the German word is flunch. That is, yeah. uh, if you're looking like a pop in. <laughs> um, freeze frame. And freeze frame and then you play Snort. some ballad in, in the... Yeah, the smallest. smallest violin of the, the whole world. Oh. Um, yeah, but uh, that was an exciting race. And although mm-hmm. that game we played yesterday was also not that short. No, but it was more in the range of 40, 45 minutes. It and, wasn't and it was exciting all the time. Yes, so. yes. It didn't, feel, it didn't feel like it would drag. Like I said, I had three empty rounds and you had maybe three or four. Mm-hmm. So that is in comparison and, to the base game. not in a row. Which yeah. Also helped. Yeah. In comparison to the base game and uh, base game with Harbor, this is really, really low numbers. We had. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but if I remember correctly, you had about ten to eighteen empty rounds in the Harbor expansion in that I one don't, and a half I don't, hour. I don't but it was it, it, it was, was two often, digit. It was two digit it was often, number. It was often enough that uh, all you the players really at the table were annoyed by it and. Considerably notices, I, I specifically remember that while we were playing that, that we kind of all went like the yay cheer if someone actually was able to do something. Yeah. Um, again, uh, maybe we, we we started with this probably on, on the wrong foot, although the expansion says, well, if you haven't played this before, you should start with the Harbor expansion before starting with the um, the Millionaire's Row expansion. Yeah, because this is way I, more involved in, com- in in terms of, okay, strategy, what yeah. tactical thing I, do I want to do? I mean, I can see that for eight-year-olds when where the game is kind of starting off at, at least for the age recommendation. If you've played this and um, are at least have some experience with with board games and this isn't entirely new for you i would almost say start, start with, with the, the millionaire's ex- uh, Rose yes. expansion and uh if you then want further diversity and some more different cards although as you can see here it's not that many card or many new card types that come into uh into the game it's like three three blue two green two purple and three red uh, not counting the, the big project cards um, then you can go for uh, could also go for the harbor expansion. Yeah. Uh, although I I would have been perfectly fine just with this mm-hmm. one. Uh, then exactly. again, I 
I'm I'm fine with having both in in this. It's a, a pretty that is something I would call a big expansion. It's almost the same amount of. It's actually more cards than the base game, if I yes. saw that correctly. Yes. And um, that uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a yes. thumbs up. Cool. So let's tease for draw for initiative and then wrap up this video. Is that fine with you? Or do sure. you have any clever thoughts that uh, no, I, haven't been I, addressed yet? I think I got my enthusiasm off my chest. Now I can do, <sighs> now he do can, some guessing. And then he can go food shopping with me and his Yay! enthusiasm goes to minus 10. Carrying stuff. Yay! Seeing people that, have, uh, that ran the cart into my... Yeah. Feet, then probably, yay. Probably so. I'm not sure if that is something that is specifically German, but um, I hope I, so. Other, I mean, uh, just to I save think other I, people. I saw, I saw references in, in the US, but we still have them. The old people at the at the cashier and say, "Hold on, young man, I have this right. Hang on, it's one, two. Uh, can you pick whatever I?" Years later, then uh, I don't find that as annoying as people that are just not looking where they go with their card, and then you have really hurting feet, like the back of your feet when you ram the card in there. It's like, God damn it! I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not transparent. I'm, yes, I'm a small person, but I wear colorful things. You can see me. That's yeah, actually I, more the annoying I, thing I, that actually, I, the thing <laughs> when you go food shop. The, the we thing, go off on a tangent. The thing I, I, I want to point out here: there's one thing I dislike even more than that. That is uh, people standing in the rows, blocking yeah. the way for everybody, and either talking or not. I mean, not I, just not I, being I, observant to their surroundings. Yeah, it's I, like I, they're I'm alone on baffled, the planet. Baffled a little bit because I. Kind of, if I'm moving somewhere or standing somewhere, I'm also trying to look out that I'm not running into things or standing in the way of things. I'm so yeah. maybe maybe I'm weird. Probably I'm weird. So. Yeah, but in a good way. So now let's do some guessing work. Um, next week uh, we're gonna have the twentieth episode of uh, Draw for Initiative. So, so it's, it's a an special. RPG. Show. It's a it's a Draw for Initiative. No, it's a painting. Yeah, but it's an, sure. it's an RPG game because 20 sided dice. 20 no, it's, uh, no, 20 meaning it's a special episode. 10, okay. 20, 30, 40. Okay. These are the special episodes so where we are not going with a normal plan. With colors. Yes. Okay. It's not black and white. <laughs> so, so, but it's, it it's, it's um, a game that did bring out the worst rolling dice luck in one of our friends. It's a game where you die a lot. It has it in the name. And um, um, and it's, I guess it's not age appropriate. Yes. It's very mature. Yes. Rated. Yes. And it's uh, limited to maybe, I guess, just a couple hundred or maybe thousand people in the yes. world. And it is quite work intense uh, building the game before you can actually yes. play the game. And you can build a house with it. And, it, it, and, and you were lying because it's actually not colorful at all because it is pretty much black. But our paintings are very colorful. But there's one very dominant color in this, yes. probably. And yes. So it's, it's, it's can I, I I would assume it's very black, very white, and very red. It is very turquoise, very black, and uh, a tiny bit of a brownish red. That's okay. what we used. And yeah, that's that sounds pretty much like Pictionary to me. It's not. No? No. Oh. Then, I, then I'm close. Are you really? No, you're not. Because you were cluing right in to the... Uh -huh. mm, are you clueless? Are you not? Maybe? I, I can give you a hint as, as the time of right now. I think this game is still in the top 50, maybe even top 20 of uh, the board game geek hotness list. Hmm. 
And like I said, since it's a very special episode, it's the 20th episode. We're going to have something special built in there when it comes to painting, just the painting process. So hop on to the channel on Wednesday, 9 a.m. CET, and you can find out what Tina and I did. And hmm. I, it's or one just, of my favorites in this uh, in this uh, or just follow round. the the draw for initiative board game geek list yeah. which I try to update then timely on Wednesdays um, to add those videos same as our videos here are added to the uh, gamers couch geek list um, in case someone's following and subscribing on YouTube don't worry it's all in the same channel anyway yeah and uh, speaking all of the YouTube, other all the other things are on the other social medias that are in the description box below. And speaking of YouTube, like he said, do the good stuff. Like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because this really helps. It's a nine. It's a nine. It's wine time. We're on vacation. Goodbye. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Did you roll that on purpose or? Yeah, the guy can be a... <laughs> it's an awesome ending. Just saying.